<coughs> Jesus, I need some water. And we're rolling. What is good, y'all? Welcome back to our channel. And if you're new, hello, hi, welcome. My name is Shakira. And on this channel, we are going to be diving deep into important conversations surrounding health, wealth, relationships, personal development, and literally everything in between. So I know you do not want to miss any of the topics we're going to be covering here. So make sure you hit that subscribe button before we go ahead and get started. Now, in today's video, we are going to be talking about money mindset. Okay. The mindset that you need to have before you start dealing with anything that has to do with personal finance, business, money, anything like that. I am going to be having my trusty dusty iPad with me. Just if you see me looking down, I want to make sure that I am giving you guys the most thorough information without all the extra fluff. All right, so let's get right into the video. Probably the number one reason why most people do not generate wealth in their lifetime is because they have the wrong attitude and the wrong mindset about money and we're going to be talking about scarcity and abundance here average school systems are not having the conversation nearly enough about money no bunto. we're programmed from a young age to tolerate just enough or we grew up in an environment where the mindset that was around money was always operating out of scarcity instead of abundance. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is that scarcity versus abundance mindset. Listen to these and tell me which ones you resonate with more or which ones are the kinds of convers or which ones are the kinds of thoughts that you tell yourself? Are you the kind of person that says, this is what I have and it's not enough versus this is what I have and it is enough and I'm available for more? Are you the kind of person that says, I can't afford that versus I'm gonna find a way to afford that? Are you the kind of person that denies the desire for more or that understands that desires are a part of human nature and you use that desire to encourage you? Or maybe this is the kind of person that you are. I don't have enough to give or I don't have enough to donate versus I'm gonna give, I'm gonna donate whatever it is that I can. There's gonna be a bunch of limiting beliefs that you can have around money, but you need to recognize these. And in a little bit, I'm gonna go over a few action steps that you can take to start reframing your mindset when it comes to money. Take a shot every time I say money in this, uh, in this video. So some of the limiting beliefs that people can have about money are there's only a limited supply of money in the world, so I have to hold on to what it is that I have. Believe it or not, another limiting belief is believing that the road to financial security means saving every single dollar that you earn rather than finding ways to attain more money by using what you do have. And I know we've all heard the saying, money doesn't grow on trees. My dad would say that so much. And honestly, it has kind of been drilled into my mind. Money doesn't grow on trees. And what do you think that that is doing to a young person, a young child with an impressionable mind? they are going to start ingraining that they're going to start believing that and over the years if you keep telling yourself that money doesn't grow on trees you're going to hold on to every dollar that you have and i know you've heard the saying if you love something let it go and i fully believe in that especially when it comes to money i'm not saying to spend your money frivolously or irresponsibly but i am saying that it is not bad to spend your money um, you just have to spend it correctly. Another limiting belief that excludes a lot of the people who think this is by believing that there are secrets to having a lot of money and that only certain kinds of people can have a lot of money. Now, if you are telling yourself that, then you start believing that you're not the kind of person that deserves to have a lot of money. So if you do think that, then you need to tell yourself, I am also that kind of person. Um, and then you will start to associate yourself and you will start to behave like a person does who is very wealthy. So you do not have to be a certain kind of person or born into a certain lineage in order to be wealthy. Anybody can generate wealth and that is the first step when it comes to your money mindset. You have to believe that this is true. Now just a couple more, believing that money changes people and it changes people for the worse. Money is not good or evil. Money is a tool and it amplifies whatever kind of person you are. So if you are the kind of person that has a good heart, you have good intentions, money is going to just be a resource for you to act more on those on those intentions, on those feelings that you have inside of your body. Now, if you are the kind of person who maybe you have a really big ego or you seek a lot of external validation, then 
having a lot of money can, it maybe not might even change you as a person, but it's just gonna make it seem like you care about materialistic or superficial things. But money at the end of the day does not change people. Money changes your circumstances so that you can have more freedom to do things that you wanna do. Another one, if you have a business or you offer some kind of service, by lowering your prices because you don't think that people will pay more for your service or for your product, that is a limiting belief that you have around money and you need to tackle that. Um, another one is believing that you are not worthy of receiving wealth. Now this one is one that you're gonna have to do that shadow work and figure out why do you believe that you are not worthy of receiving money. And um, quite frankly, I don't, I, I can't be the one to do that for you. So if you want to change your belief around money and you believe that you're not worthy of having money, then you need to fix that. There are an infinite number of things that people can believe about themselves. And so that is why I implore you to take a few minutes, maybe even a few minutes longer than a few minutes, <laughs> and really sit down and go deep and try to figure out what are all of the limiting beliefs that you have about money. Okay, so the very first step that you need to take when changing your money mindset is aware, ah, awareness. You need to be aware that you have a certain kind of mindset about money. And the first step to changing anything about yourself is to be aware of it. You can't change anything that you're not aware of. So I have a little writing exercise for you. What I need you to do is sit down, take out a piece of paper, and on one side, you are going to write, what are the things I believed or said? And on the other side, you are going to rewrite that narrative. So on one side, for example, if you believe that you're not worthy of having money, I'm only gonna use one limiting belief, but you will have to do this with every single limiting belief that you have. And on the other side, you're gonna go ahead and flip the script. You're going to rewrite that narrative because whatever it is that you tell yourself, that is going to be, that is going to be the narrative that your life plays out. So on one side, I am not worthy of having a lot of wealth. On the other side, you can write something like, I am worthy of prosperity, abundance, and wealth and I am open to receiving it. So right there, you're already saying that you already have that belief that you are worthy of having the money. And by saying that you're open to receiving it, that's not blocking you off to the universe, to God giving you those things. Because a lot of people can say that they want something, but then be closing themselves off to it. Like love, for example, or a happy relationship. You say you want those things, but then when somebody comes into your life, you put your guards up and you don't let that person in and you're you're not you're making it a lot harder for them to give you what it is that you want. So you have to know what you want and you have to be open to receiving what you want. Remember that what you speak is always going to be a reflection of who you believe yourself to be. So you want to make sure that the conversation you're having with yourself, your inner dialogue is positive. We've got step number 1 which was awareness and now step number 2 is to speak blessings over your bills. Now, why am I saying to speak blessings over your bills when bills are probably everybody's number one headache? Well, the reason is because you don't, again, want to have any kind of negative mindset when it comes to finances. So whenever you are paying your bills, by speaking blessings over them, you are letting God know that you are so thankful that one, you have these bills and two, you have the means to pay your bills. Even if you don't have the means to pay your bills or to pay all of them or to pay them on time, you still want to speak blessings over them as if you do. <coughs> so what we're doing with this tactic is changing the energy that we have around our bills. Like I said, a lot of people see their bills as a burden or they're just upset whenever a bill comes or whatever the case may be. So we're changing the energy associated from paying bills from that of lack and fearfulness to I'm so happy and I'm so grateful that I can pay my water, my electric, my phone, my car bill, and I am available for more. And remember, we're always putting that I'm available for more because that is 
sending the sign that yes, you are content with what you have, but if your goal is to have more, you have to be available for it. Another thing that you can do to start acting as if is going into a restaurant and ordering something without looking at the price. The reason for doing this is again, putting yourself in that position where you are playing the part. So somebody who's rich as hell does not look at the price tag, usually. Not saying all of them, but especially if you're going into a restaurant and you want to enjoy a meal, rich as hell, I'm not gonna be looking at how much my steak costs or how much my salmon costs. What we're doing here is allowing our desires to be. You don't wanna deny your desires because again, that is gonna put you in a position and a mindset of lack scarcity and fear and we are not operating that way so by going into the store into the um restaurant and you order whatever it is that you want you're not denying yourself of that pleasure you're not denying yourself of that desire and then the feeling that you have associated with that experience then you're like oh, i'm so grateful that i can go into the restaurant and i can order what i want and i can pay for it and not have to worry and I'm still secure and I still have everything that I need and I'm always available for more. If that is too fiscally out of reach at the moment, you can go into the restaurant, order what you can order, and then you're gonna tell yourself, next time I come here, that's gonna be what I order because my money story is going to be different. So again, we're acknowledging our desires, we're acknowledging our want for pleasure, we're acknowledging our desires for new experiences and just letting ourselves know that, you know, everything is taken care of. And a little tangent, this is going off of the notes that I have, but I just said that we are going to have all of the wealth and something that I want to include <laughs> in this before I forget, just because maybe we don't have the physical, tangible money in our account at the present moment, that does not mean that we are not rich, that we are not wealthy. Um, Wealth comes in an abundance of different ways, not just money. And even if you have $5,000 or $10,000 in your bank account, that is rich to somebody else. Now I'm not undermining anybody's experience or whatever anyone is going through right now financially, but you have to always have the spirit and have the attitude that you are a wealthy person. Now, again, this goes back to the beliefs, the scarcity versus abundance beliefs. If I say I'm wealthy, I'm taken care of, I have everything that I need and I'm available for more. What does that sound like when compared to somebody who says I'm broke, I'm never gonna have a lot of money and the kind of situation that I'm in right now, this seems to just be what it's gonna be for the rest of my life. Wouldn't you much rather wanna have the outlook of the person who believes that they are going to be rich and who is fully absorbed in that feeling. And even as the kind of person that I would wanna hang out with, I wouldn't wanna hang out with a person that always complains that they're broke. And I don't wanna say broke as if it's bad, but when you start complaining that you're broke all the time and you're not doing anything to fix it, that's when you need to, again, sit back and reevaluate. Now we're gonna be doing a lot of evaluating in this um, conversation. So just be ready for that. The third action step that we want to take in order to change our money mindset is invest in ourselves. So you want to learn how to invest in yourself and continue investing in yourself. And investing doesn't always have to mean stocks and crypto. Investing in yourself just means putting the money that you earn and putting it back into yourself. So that could be either through books, that could be through seminars, that could be through therapists, that could be through personal development, that could be through investing in your health and wellness. So getting a gym membership or investing in your food and making sure that the food that you're eating is good quality. So you can invest in yourself a number of different ways. Now, three books that I have that you can basically get started in changing your money mindset. First, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Um, Science of Getting Rich by Wallace D. Waddles, Mr. Waddles. And Secrets of a Millionaire Mind by T. Harv Ecker. And I'm really begging you guys because I care about you. 
but please do not skip out on this part. And I know we live in a very busy world where sitting down and reading for an hour, two hours, maybe for everybody is not possible. So the next best thing until you do free up some of your time um, is to listen to audiobooks. <sighs> <coughs> But yeah, I just feel like whenever you're reading a book or listening to an audiobook, because they're going so much slower, you're able to retain the information a lot better. All right, number four, and I know my business owners need to hear this and my people who provide services, but you need to know your worth, honey. You need to set your prices. If you have a business, if you offer a service, you need to set your prices to what you believe them to be and do not lower them for anybody. No friends and family discounts. If those were your real friends and family, they would support your business and pay full price for whatever it is that you offer. No skimping out here. No um, free 99, no friends and family discount, none of that. Oftentimes, a lot of people, when you are starting a business out, maybe like to get more experience or whatever the case may be, you set your prices to a lot lower to maybe gain clientele, to have a portfolio, start building that portfolio. Um, but I'm not saying that that's wrong, but once you do realize that you're getting to the point where it, one, it's becoming a lot more demanding on you um, and more demanding of your time, or you recognize that your skill set has just improved, which naturally that happens it is okay to let your clients know that you're going to be raising your prices and a little example that you can email to them or you can send out to them or you can put it on your website you can say in order to provide you better service and let them know how you're going to provide that better service so in order to provide you better service by blah 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 we will be raising our monthly subscription rates by 20 percent beginning on whenever now, if you are going to be changing your prices, I do want to let you know that you might lose some customers in that process, but at the same time, you're going to be gaining so much more. And what's more important is that you're going to be gaining customers who actually see the value that you set your prices to be, as opposed to somebody setting their prices for you. Now, the fifth action step that you want to take in order to change your money mindset is let your desires fuel you, honey. You need to let your desires fuel you. And by fuel you, I don't mean just, I want this or I wish for this. Like you literally have to have a white hot desire for wealth in this case. Now a burning white hot desire is absolutely required. Like this, you can't skip out on it. And to know that you have a burning desire for something or to start building that desire, you have to think about the thing that you want sit there and visualize, close your eyes, have your eyes open, whatever you wanna do, and imagine yourself in that position. I feel like by closing your eyes, you're using your mind's eye, and so you know, you're know you less distracted by what's physically in the room around you, but closing your eyes, now you're using your mind's eye, and think about what it is that you want. You have to picture it, you have to put yourself in that position, and you have to be feeling the feelings that you have whenever you have that thing. So if that is complete security, if that is complete peace of mind, if that is complete bliss, you have to feel those emotions in that moment, even if you're not sitting on the beach in Punta Cana just yet, okay? Now, why do I say it's important to have a burning desire and not just a regular desire? A burning desire is going to be what actually fuels you to take action. Your determination and drive to take action are based on how much you desire the outcome and how valuable it is to you. So if you study the lives of successful people throughout all of history, you're gonna find that most of them possessed a white heat of desire that became a healthy obsession which drove all other necessary components. So once you find this desire in yourself, you're gonna do whatever it takes and accept no excuses. Now that is why it is important to have a white hot desire for wealth or for money or for abundance. Another tangible thing that you can do to start building this white hot desire is to speak a mantra or a mission statement over yourself aloud every single day. And this kind of plays back into the visualization. Uh, whenever you are speaking this mantra over yourself, you want to make sure that you are seeing the vision, you are feeling the vision that you have for yourself before you have it. Now, last but not least, the sixth 
action step that we want to take is action. You heard? None of the things that you want are going to come into fruition if you are not taking action. Point blank period. If you're a perfectionist, you are likely somebody that gets stuck in the little details. Let me just tell you right now that that is the worst freaking thing that you can do. And I say that with so much passion and so much enthusiasm in my voice because the amount of time that I've wasted by paying attention to little details that don't matter. I'll just, I'll just leave you with that face. But just know that even taking messy action is better than not taking any action at all. Let me put it in a little a diagram for you. All right, here we have the road, the road to success, okay? Here's our start point. Here's where we wanna be. And we have two scenarios, so boom. Start point, where we wanna be. Even if I'm taking action and I'm messing up all along the way and maybe sometimes I go back and sometimes I go forward and up and down and whatever, I still get there, right? Now I'm not saying that this is the most efficient way to do things, but the fact that we took some kind of messy action is still better than us not taking any action at all because what was the result? we still ended up getting to success. Even taking messy action or taking imperfect action, that's gonna be better and it's gonna produce a better result than not taking any action at all. So stop waiting for the time to be right. Stop waiting for all the stars to align and just go out there and do it. Something that I learned from Mel Robbins that you can take with you and apply it today actually is something called the five second rule. Now essentially, you're gonna use this whenever you have self doubts or you have procrastination brewing in the back of your mind and you're like, oh, I know I need to do this, but maybe I could do it later. This is the moment that you can use the five second rule. So what you're gonna do is count down from five five, four, three, two, one. If you're in bed and you need to wake up and it's six in the morning and you don't wanna wake up, five, four, three, two, one, jump out of bed and that's it. And by using the five second rule, you are taking that time element out of the equation and you're giving yourself less time to think about what it is that you have to do and more time to just do it. This is not going to be comfortable. I'm just gonna go ahead and say that out the gate. But what we're doing is tricking our brain into doing the things that are uncomfortable just because we know we have to do them. Our action steps. First and foremost, we need to have the awareness because if you're not aware that you need to change something, then you're not going to change it. Number two, we wanna speak blessings over our bills. We wanna be thankful that we have the means to pay what we need to pay because when we're thankful, we're creating space for more. Number three, you wanna invest in yourself. If we are not living this life to learn more, then what is the point? And you have to remember that you need to constantly be growing your mind and growing your knowledge base as well. Once you get into a position where your environment is different or your situation is different, there's gonna be new things that you have to learn. It's like a level, um, like playing video games. If you start at level one, maybe that level is gonna be kind of easy, but once you start moving up, you gain more experience, then there's new things that you have to learn how to do and how to employ. So number four, you need to know your worth. Stop letting other people define your worth for you. And at the end of the day, the way you see yourself is how other people are gonna see you. Number five, you wanna let your desires fuel you and you need to have a white hot desire for what you want because that's gonna drive you to take action. So, that was all that I had for you today. I really hope that you enjoyed this. I want you to remember that this is a practice that is gonna have to be worked on every single day, especially if you're like me, 20 something years old, and you've lived your whole life and you've had a certain kind of mindset around money. Maybe this is your first time hearing these new things, but now it is time to go ahead and put them into action. Because this is a practice, there are gonna be days where you are just getting upset, you get frustrated, you're like, what is even the point of doing this? Because thankfully, I say that sarcastically if you couldn't tell, the human mind is always going to bring some kind of self-doubt. Um, you know, we're not perfect, we're not invincible, and so as life goes on and as things happen to us, our beliefs can shift and change a little bit, but again, this is a practice, so 
we're getting better at it every day. Again, remember that you do not want to wait until you have a million dollars in your bank account to start putting these into practice. The reason that we're putting all of this into practice today is to prepare ourselves for when we do have money. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, leave a like, leave a comment, share it with your friends, and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Doses. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <sighs>